So, <clears throat> a little bit about brain waves. You ready? You geniuses? Beta brain waves. When you are waking consciousness and you wake up in the morning and your eye starts to perceive daylight, the moment your eye picks up daylight, the optic nerve sends a signal right to the pineal gland and the pineal gland begins to make a neurotransmitter called serotonin. And serotonin is the daytime neurotransmitter and it creates excitatory function in the brain. And the moment the brain begins to fire in serotonin, you begin to pay attention to your outer world and the brain perks up and now the brain's job is to create meaning between the outer world and the inner world. And the way it does that is it uses its senses and it's thinking about how it feels, if it's tired, if it's hungry, who's a threat, who they like, what things they have to do. And as that starts to happen, the brain waves and the neocortex or the thinking brain where conscious awareness exists is very fast. Are you with me? Now, when you go to bed at night and light begins to diminish and your brain is perceiving less light, the, the signal that goes to the pineal gland takes serotonin and turns it into melatonin. And melatonin makes you sleepy and changes your brain waves. So we could say that Sarah gets you up in the morning and Mel puts you to bed at night. You got it? Now, think about this. If you want to be defined as thought alone, you have to become thought alone. And when you do that and you close your eyes and you sit in a meditation and you put blindfolds on or you close your eyes, you are disconnecting from your external environment. Your attention is no longer on the outer world because you're seeing less information, which is 80% of information sensory-wise comes through your eyes. You're playing music in the background or you put earplugs in or there's silence. Now you're hearing less information. And because of that, you're sitting your body down and you're making it sit still, disconnecting from your environment, putting your body in one place and transcending time. The moment that happens, your neocortex begins to slow its brain waves down and your brain waves move into alpha. And in alpha, that's the imaginary world where the inner world is more real than the outer world. You could still hear the outer world, you could sense it, but more of your attention is in the inner world. How many people are with me? Now, if you allow your body to fall asleep and your mind is awake, that's called theta. That's what I call twilight. Now, if you've conditioned your body to be the mind and your body is now asleep, it means it's no longer the mind, which means instantaneous change can happen. And when we studied our students in long meditation, we see these huge bursts of theta, really long, profound bursts of theta, and they are in the netherworld. And their body is resting and their mind is awake. They're dreaming in that state. Now, if you miss that window and you miss that door, you move into delta. And delta is deep restorative sleep. Now, every now and then, we see this in our work a lot of times, you'll see what we call gamma brain waves. Now, I call gamma brain waves super consciousness. And when that kundalini energy that's sitting in those lower centers that you use for sexual expression to digest your food, all the energy you need to drive aggressively or tell your coworker off or being chased by a predator, all the energy that's sitting in these lower centers, instead of being eliminated out, begins to move up. And when that energy begins to move up, that sympathetic nervous system switches on right with the parasympathetic nervous system and the body is relaxed. And just like an orgasm, that energy begins to release up into the brain. And there's a little gate at the brain stem called the thalamic gate. And the moment that gate opens up, that energy begins to move right into the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is sensitive to pressure. And all of a sudden, that pineal gland gets a rush of energy and it compresses and it begins to release electromagnetic energy. And the pineal gland begins to take melatonin and turn it into some very profound neurotransmitters. And we have measured amplitudes of energy in our work 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, 26,000 times, 40,000 times normal in the brain. And that's because when that neurotransmitter is released, and that, that electrical current begins to activate the nervous system, 
all of a sudden you're tuning in to possibility and now the brain and nervous system is processing a greater stream of consciousness and those microtubules in the cells turn on. If you take that same molecule and you tweak it again, you'll find the most powerful hallucinogenic known to man. Now why is that important? Because the moment that occurs in gamma, what you're experiencing in your inner world is more real than anything you've ever experienced in your outer world and you'll never forget that moment and the brain literally tracks it neurologically and produces a new chemical and the moment that occurs the body moves out of the past and we have seen people heal themselves instantaneously when this energy is released so then gamma then is super consciousness it's when the sympathetic nervous system begins to release energy back to the brain and all the energy you've used to create a baby to digest food to run from a predator is now moving up to the brain from whence it came. And when that occurs, the brain goes into a heightened state, and that's called gamma. So, from the ages of zero to two, children, for the most part, are functioning in delta brainwave patterns. They're asleep with their eyes open. Between the ages of two and six, their brainwaves move into theta which means they're in twilight. And if you ever see a child two or three years old, they're tracking things around the room that you can't see because they are, they're in a lucid state. Now, between the ages of zero and six years old, their brain is completely in the subconscious state and all of their attention is on their inner world and not on their outer world. As they begin to learn the laws of the environment, their brain waves move into alpha. So for the first six years of their life, they're in an imaginary state. And so then in alpha, they pretend, they play, they begin to interact with their outer world and they're paying attention to their inner world. And so as they begin to learn from different things in their environment, they notice a change in their internal chemical state. They're altered in some way. It wakes them up and they pay attention to whoever or whatever caused that. And because their awareness is now going more on their outer environment, their brain waves move into alpha. After the age of 12, the door kind of shuts, and now they move into beta consistently. And beta, as I said, is when the outer world is more real in the inner world. So most of you, <laughs> most of you, but not all of you, are functioning for the most part in low-level beta. You're relaxed and you're paying attention to what I'm saying, and because you're relaxed and paying attention, your brain is not threatened in any way, and you're absorbing information. But here's what most of you do when I'm developing a concept or an idea and you find it particularly interesting. You go from beta to alpha and you go like this. And the moment you do that, you're consolidating that information neurologically in your brain. And so in order for you to learn, you have to switch from beta to alpha. Now, if I said to you, oh my God, I forgot to tell you, there's a 50 question test that you have to take before you leave. And if you can't pass it, you have to stay in here till tomorrow. Your brain would perk up a little bit more and you'd start paying attention, like we took the light bulb and made it a little bit brighter. But when you are freaked out and emotional or anxious or fearful or angry, you move into high level beta. And look at high level beta compared to mid range beta, it's twice as high. Now, in this state, you understand that it's not a time to learn. It's not a time to trust. You're not gonna, it's not a time to communicate. You're not going to say to the predator, come here, sweetheart. I trust you if it's a lion. You're not going to do that, right? You're less likely to trust in that state. And when those chemicals are running, there'll always be a gap between the way things appear and the way things really are. And if you act during that refractory period, you'll always say the same thing. I should have never said that. I should have never done that. I should have never thought that. I should have never sent that nasty email because you were altered in that state. So we can't learn in the state because no new information will come into your nervous system that isn't equal to the emotion that you're experiencing. So most people take drugs or they <clears throat> overdo something or drink alcohol to sedate the body, to relax it so they can drop down those stages. So the job then is to enter the kingdom of heaven. You have to become like a child again. You with me? So let this circle represent your mind. And when you're born, you're totally subconscious mind. How do we know that? Because we just studied the brain waves and for the first seven to 12 years of your life, your brain is in a subconscious state. 
and you learn by these positive and negative identifications and associations. So our groove then is to go from beta to what? And we would call that alpha 2 and theta 2. And we could say then that beta and alpha represent the conscious mind, and alpha, theta, and delta represent the subconscious mind. How many people are with me? Gamma superconsciousness, it doesn't fit in that model. Now, take a look at this. When you're living by the hormones of stress, you produce very incoherent brainwave patterns because different compartments are not working together because it's not a time to communicate. It's time for emergency. And when you measure those brainwave patterns, they're very incoherent. When you begin to connect to source, when you truly allow that consciousness, your consciousness, your subjective free will consciousness, to merge with that objective consciousness, which is a loving intelligence and intelligent love, and you begin to merge with it, different compartments of your brain that were once divided begin to work together and synchronize. And when that occurs, you start to feel whole, you start to feel more love for your life. You feel more spontaneous, more poised. You feel clear. You trust in the universe because your brain is now functioning in a holistic state. 